Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Clara Z and I do videos on luxury handbags and fashion items. So today I'm really excited to share with you my Hermes Kelly bracelet with the diamonds. So if you're curious about this bracelet and if you're considering to buy this, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. What I'll do is I'll go over a bit about the bracelet and then I receive several questions from you through my Instagram. So I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge and in the end if you stick around I'm going to do some modeling shots of this bracelet stacked against other bracelets that I own mainly Cartier so I hope this will be helpful for you if you are considering this bracelet or if you just want to know more about it so let's get started so here is the Hermes Kelly bracelet I'm just going to rotate that slowly so you can see what it looks like and it is in an oval shape as you can see and it has 61 diamonds which is approximately 0.36 carats and this is in the SH size which means it is 15.8 centimeters in circumference and 0.55 centimeters in width. I did have a chance to weigh this and on the kitchen scale this was approximately 22.8 grams in case you are interested. The clasp is really easy to open. Basically, you just twist it to the side like this, like a Kelly lock, and you can open it just like that. And if you want to close it, you just close that up, and then you just twist the lock like that. In terms of putting it on my wrist, it is not difficult at all. You can see it is in an oval shape, and you just basically put that through the side of your arm and you put that over and then you just twist so you can easily put this on by yourself and you're not playing with some funny bracelets where you feel like you're always chasing the tail like my Van Cleef bracelet. Anyways, let's get to some of the questions you had from my Instagram. So the first question I got was, does it scratch easily? So I've been wearing this bracelet on and off and I can tell you any bracelets, they definitely will scratch. Will they scratch a lot? Not really, but if you're the type who is really, really worried about scratches on your jewelry, I'm telling you, it definitely will get scratches, especially along the bottom, because if you're like me and you use a keyboard or you wear them to do other things as you put your hand on the table, it will scratch. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like underneath. You can probably see some scratches. However, if you are perhaps sitting across from me on a table, you probably really wouldn't notice. It's the same for every other bracelet. So just as an example, this is my Cartier Love Bracelet and I wear it a lot. So you can see there are scratches on there. However, you really wouldn't see them unless you were like looking at it like this close. So if you're gonna wear bracelets, scratches are a given. It won't have deep scratches unless you run it through something very, very sharp. But in terms of daily wear, wear and tear, it definitely is going to have some scratches. You can probably get it polished somewhere, but however, I generally don't recommend and polishing the gold on some of your jewelry because it removes a layer of the gold. Second question is how are you going to stack it with your other hand jewelry? So, so far I have been wearing this bracelet by itself because it does have the diamonds. I feel that it is already statement enough. I can probably add it to some of my other bracelets, which I will show you towards the end of the video. However, I don't like things to be too heavy on my arm and I feel that this by itself is already very elegant and statement enough. However, having said that, if you like to stack your jewelry, definitely this one is extremely stackable. So the next question is, do you need to dress up in order to match the bling bling diamond? And to me, the answer is no. Actually, for a lot of women, something like a tennis bracelet or something with diamonds is a daily wear piece such as this 
tennis bracelet that I currently own so I don't feel that it's overly bling bling but of course you need to be comfortable with it when I first started wearing diamonds I felt like a little bit of diamonds was like a lot but you get used to it and after a while actually diamonds do have shrinkage so I always tell people don't buy something too small because after a while you'll think it's too small of course you don't want it to be too big that it's so in your face. I think it really depends on your lifestyle and how it complements the size of your hand or your other jewelry. And you need to think about what else you're going to be wearing and whether you're going to be wearing too much jewelry or too much bling. It's a bit subjective, but I personally feel that it's not overly too bling. And for example, today I am wearing this, this white shirt and I'm actually wearing a pair of shorts and I wore this together and I didn't feel it was overly bling when I first got this I felt like wow this is so bling but in the context of someone looking at you from head to toe this is a very small portion of your whole body and so I don't feel it is overly bling if it makes sense and if you're a bit worried about that what I would recommend is that you can wear your jewelry and I always do this before I buy jewelry look for a full-length mirror and see what the overall look looks like because when people are looking at you, they may see you from a distance or half body or full body. And because jewelry are such small items, they might not stand out as much as you think they do. You might think that it's overly bling because it's kind of like right in your face. But if you look at the context of your jewelry from a total outfit, total look point of view, it won't stick out as much. So I hope that's helpful for you. Next question is comparison to the CDC bracelet. I'm going to put that towards the end because I'm also going to compare and stack that against some of my other jewelry so make sure you stick around for that. The next question is the lock secure and I can safely tell you that the lock is secure. When I twist it, it actually kind of feels some sort of pressure when I push against it and then it kind of has a stop lock when it faces this way so as long as you make sure that it is fully twisted so that it's perpendicular it really should be fine and I don't feel that the lock is loose or flimsy or anything like that of course if you do buy the bracelet just make sure that you don't have a faulty one and that it twists and locks properly so I do feel some pressure in order to twist this I don't feel it would be something easily twisted say for example I was pulling a shirt over my head or if I was pulling sleeves over you do have to apply some sort of pressure and because it is a small knob you really do need to use your thumb and your finger to apply pressure and push that in order for that to move over so I can assure you I think it feels pretty secure. Next question is, does the turn class get caught or knock onto things? So in terms of knocking onto things, I have not experienced that. I think it's because the knob is on the top. If the bracelet is too big for you, perhaps it would knock on other things because it was facing the bottom. However, that means you probably just have the wrong size. But because it is on the top, I haven't found that I've knocked it really onto anything. This knob is actually so small. Now, I haven't been wearing sweaters with this yet, so I can't be sure if this would maybe snag on a sweater because it's currently super hot in Hong Kong. It's summer right now. However, in terms of regular shirts like the one I'm wearing today or shirts with a sleeve, it hasn't really caught on this knob. And if I were to wear a sweater, there is a possibility it could catch on this knob. I can see that happening. However, again, I haven't tested that out yet because it is around 30 to 35 degrees and there is no way I'm going to be wearing a sweater. However, I am going to Tokyo soon so I definitely will be wearing sweaters and if it does get caught please pay attention to my Instagram I will definitely put a note of that in my Instagram if I do find that it catches against my sweaters the next question is it easy to take off and put on and as I showed you earlier in the video it is very easy to do so and thankfully it's something you could put on and take off by yourself and you don't have to ask for extra help or put tape on other kind of bracelets that you feel like the head is trying to catch the tail. So the next question is, is it lightweight and 
durable. So as I mentioned, it weighs approximately 22.8 grams. I personally do find this lightweight for a gold bangle. Of course, it's not pure solid gold. However, compared to other bracelets such as the Justin Clue, this one definitely is slightly lighter. You don't want it to be too light because you're paying for something that has some gold. It's not pure gold, but I feel that if it's too light, it might feel flimsy or maybe there are too many metal alloys in there that could make it bend and so I always feel like if you're gonna buy fine jewelry it should have some heft but it shouldn't be to the point that it makes your life stressful and you get wrist pain or carpal tunnel syndrome from it so I personally find it lightweight and so if you're worried about the weight I personally find that it is easy to wear and definitely lightweight in my opinion. The next question is honestly do you prefer this or Cartier Love ignoring the troublesome screw for Cartier. So I think this really depends on what you're looking for. I find that the Hermes look is a bit more elegant and simplistic. Cartier is also simplistic but I find that the look is a bit more industrial and edgier so it depends on what kind of look you're going for. If you want something a bit more understated, a bit more elegant, I would say Hermes is a great choice but if you want something that is slightly edgier and industrial, I think Cartier is definitely gives me more of those vibes. That's not to say you can't have both in your collection. I own both and I love both a lot. It just really kind of depends on my outfit and what kind of mood I'm in. If you ask me if I had to only own one between Cartier and Hermes, probably if I was just starting out my collection, I would say Cartier. However, if you are building up a collection and you want to diversify a bit, I do also like the Cartier items. They are very classic and they're also very well made and they are timeless pieces. So I'm not worried about these items going out of fashion in say 10, 20 or even 30 years. Next question, how is the rose gold at Hermes compared to Cartier? I do have a ring here. So you can see I have the Justin Clue Cartier ring. And I'm just going to bring that up against the bracelet. And to be honest, it's not a really fair comparison because this is a ring and this is a bracelet. In my personal opinion, just based on kind of memory, I feel that the Cartier rose gold is slightly a bit more red or rose in the bracelet version versus the Hermes. The Hermes is slightly a little bit more yellow so I think there's a slight more rose tint on Cartier just from memory. Please don't hold me against that because this is just purely based on memory but I would say that the Hermes is probably slightly a little bit more yellow and the Cartier is a little bit more rose but I wouldn't say that they're very red. Both of them make a very tasteful rose gold. It looks a little bit more like yellow gold and I would say that over time I've heard a lot of experience whereby a lot of the rose gold they do look more yellow gold over time so it really depends on if you prefer a more reddish hue or a yellowish hue. However, I think they are both really beautiful and based on what I know, I think Hermes is extremely well known for their rose gold. So if you like rose gold, definitely Hermes is one to try. Next question, how does it stack against the Cartier Love? So again, I will put that towards the end of the video. And then another question I frequently get is, is there enough gold in here to make it worth it? Now this is the same whether it's Cartier or it's Hermes. Is it totally worth it? Probably not. If you really want pure gold, you can probably go to your local jewelry and get something in pure, pure gold. What you're honestly paying for is a lot of the brand, the workmanship, the design, and the creativity. True, you can probably get something that is pure gold, weighs more, but the workmanship may not be as fine. The branding may not be as well known. It's the same as buying any other kind of luxury item like a bag. Are you really going to be buying the bag based on the measurement of the leather and the type of leather for every single bag? 
Probably not. Like I said, these are luxury items, so definitely you're going to pay a bit more for the brand and the workmanship. What I have found is I do also own jewelry from custom made jewelers, but I also buy branded. So I think it really depends on what makes you feel happier and what gives you more a spark of joy. I do have some solid gold jewelry, small items from my family for my wedding or my grandparents, but would I wear them daily and would they make me truly happy? Well, they do have a lot of sentimental value, so definitely I'm going to keep those in my safety deposit box. But in terms of cost per wear, am I really going to wear them a lot? Mm, probably not. And if you prefer something cheaper, there is the custom route. However, if you look at the workmanship of something like a Cartier or Hermes versus something that's custom made. Not all custom made pieces are going to be so finely made and when you feel them to the touch, sometimes they're not as hefty feeling depending on the type of materials that they use. So it's really subjective and I think you just really need to choose what makes you happy and what really sparks joy and what you think you can wear a lot of and what you think you can get a lot of wear out of because what's the point of buying something super expensive, putting it in a safety deposit box and never seeing the light of day for it. Whereas if you bought something that you really love and you just enjoy just because of the way it looks or what the feeling it gives you, it's totally worth it. So try not to be too stuck up on the percentage and value of gold because honestly, if push came to shove, are you really going to go melt your Cartier items to try to distill the gold out of it? Probably not. So just buy it, enjoy it, and wear it in good health. Of course, you want it to feel hefty and it should have some gold in there, but don't get overly obsessed about how much gold there is in there because like any other luxury items, it's never going to have as much gold as you really want it to. So try not to think about how much gold and how much it's worth. Just buy it, enjoy it, and if you wear it and it gives you joy, that in itself is worth also a lot of value that you can't put a price tag on. So that sums up all the questions I got. So let's get into the stacking and comparison shots. So the questions I got the most about was the comparison against the Hermes CDC brand. Bracelet. So you can see I also own this in the rose gold color. So just as a comparison, not all of these do have diamonds, but for the one that has the diamond pyramids, this one has 48 compared to the 61 on the Kelly. And the Kelly has 0.36 carat diamonds, whereas this one has 0.24. The circumference on these are both the same. And the width of these, so this one is approximately 0.55 centimeters width and this one is slightly a hairline wider at 0.6 centimeters so this one is slightly wider but you can really hardly notice and if I compare the weight of both the Kelly bracelet is slightly lighter this one is at 22.8 grams and this one weighs 24 one gram. So I would say that the weight are comparable, but if you really want to be super technical, this one is slightly lighter, which was a bit surprising to me because actually this one has slightly more diamonds, but maybe because of the width of this one is slightly wider, so it has slightly more gold. In terms of price, this one is based on the US site around 10,700 US at the time of filming. And this one was 12,000 euros on the European website. I wasn't able to find them on both on the same website. So that gives you a slight price reference. So this one might be around $2,000 more roughly give or take. So this one will be slightly more expensive than this one simply because I think there are more diamonds on this piece. However, they are very similar and they're definitely very expensive items. So another difference between the two is the way this opens and close. As I showed you, this opens really easily based on the turn lock, whereas this one, the mechanism to close it is slightly different. You can see that there's a hole there and then this part goes into the hole. You need to close this by wheezing the bracelet like this into the hole and then once it goes into a hole it slides into the lock mechanism underneath and you can see that 
right there. So here it is closed. I would say this one is slightly harder to close because you have to get used to the movement of opening and closing the clasp. So here I need to put this into my arm and basically you can see I need to push this into the hole and then once it goes into the hole I need to slightly adjust it into the slider on the side. So that takes a bit of getting used to. They're both easy to take on and take off and basically if I need to take this off again I just need to squeeze this a bit and then move that out of the locking position and then slide that out. Whereas this one you can just basically twist that, open it very easily, open and close just like that. So just to give you a visual, this is what they look like side by side. I feel this one is a bit more elegant looking and this one is a bit more edgier. They're both classic items and you really can't go wrong with either one. It just depends on whether you prefer a more edgy look with the CDC or the more elegant look with the Kelly bracelet. I think a lot of people end up getting both, but if you're just going for one, I think it just really depends on whether you're going for an edgy look or if you're looking for more of an elegant look. So I hope these kind of modeling shots help to give you an idea of what these look like side by side and here you can see it's just plain on the bottom here. So next up I just want to stack a couple of my bracelets against the Kelly in case you're curious to see what it looks like. So the first bracelet I have this stacked with is my Cartier Love. I don't own the one with the screws because when I purchased this I wanted something that I could remove at night so you can see that this is the bangle version. However on this side you can kind of see what it looks like. It should look almost exactly the same and they stack really well and this one is in rose gold and this is in yellow gold to be honest the difference is quite faint it, this one's slightly bit more red and this one's yellow but they look almost like the same color if you look from afar you really have to look quite closely to be able to see the color differences so this is what they look like stacked together next up i have the cartier love in the silver or palladium color with the rhodium plating and one diamond so you can see what that looks like stacked against the palladium love bracelet Next up, I have this stacked against the Cartier Etincelles bracelet, which is the diamond paved bracelet. It's half paved, as you can see here. And I love stacking it like this because it just brings extra bling and diamonds to it. I don't often stack it like this just because I feel like, mm, is it too many diamonds? However, this is really pretty. And so for those of you who are considering to buy the Cartier Love and you don't want to pay for the extra diamonds, what I would recommend is getting the Love bracelet. And then instead of paying a lot for the embedded diamonds, you can actually get a paved diamond bracelet like this to stack against it or get a tennis bracelet. I think you have more options in terms of stacking options if you get separate diamonds. So here you go. This is stacked against the Love and also the Hermes Kelly bracelet. While we're on the topic of diamonds, I have this stacked against a tennis bracelet. Obviously my tennis bracelet has rounded diamonds instead of the more square ones but this will just give you an idea of how that looks stacked with a tennis bracelet. Next up is my favorite Justin Clue. I love how edgy this one is and this is how it looks stacked together and I really kind of like the juxtaposition of this one. This one is super elegant and this one is just super edgy. I kind of like how they kind of contradict each other so edgy versus elegant. That's so pretty. I love this combo. And finally, for you Van Cleef fans out there, this is my Van Cleef guilloche bracelet together with the Kelly bracelet. And again, this looks quite pretty together. Both of them are super elegant pieces, so they complement each other really nicely. And I love how this one is a bit more soft and this one is a bit more hard because it's more of a bangle. 
And of course, if you stack a lot of these together, they will rub against each other, but that's just the name of the game when you're wearing bracelets because it is on your hands. They will rub against each other and they will create kind of micro scratches against each other, but I'm not too worried about this. It's on your arms, it's on your hands, and as long as you're wearing them, they will get some small micro scratches, but they really don't bother me. Like I said, some bracelets I've had forever, like this one in the Palladium, and this one is so scratched up. I used to wear this 24-7 for so many years, and I still occasionally wear this. I even stack it together with just clue. They rub against each other and other bracelets and you can see that it still looks fine you have to look super close and obviously if I'm wearing this on my arm like this you can really hardly tell there are scratches on this and unless you really run it through something super rough or super sharp it should not create any deep scratches on a lot of these jewelry pieces I have been really enjoying this bracelet a lot so I hope this video was super helpful for you if you have any other questions please feel free to reach out to me in the comments below or or you can also reach out to me on Instagram. I will put my handle here somewhere down below. And if you haven't done so already, I'd welcome you to subscribe to my channel. I generally talk about handbags or fashion or jewelry items. So you're welcome to join me on my videos if you're interested in these topics. If you found this video helpful, you're also welcome to buy me a coffee and I will leave links down in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye now!